It's another church. Beautiful, amazing. The other one is down here. There's some remains of something. And the other one is down here. That's the one I'm gonna uh, see the last. I see this one and then I go down. I think the place is under rest restoration. But I'm gonna play the stupid tourist right now. Oops, I'm not supposed to be here, I'm sorry. So, let's see how far I get. See all these stones, they gotta be sorted out, see where they belong, and then put back on the, on the building. And uh, it's under restoration, obviously. can see the on this side I'm gonna go to the to that side and see how it looks okay a little bit of the history of the Church of the Redeemer and I make a quotation in the year 1035 AD I Abigarib Marspan general who took an edict on behalf of Sumbat Shahan Shaha, King of Kings, to Michael, Emperor of the Greeks at Constantinople. At this, and with great effort and great expense, I bought a fragment of the Holy Cross, and when I returned, completed this temple. And this is part of the inscription uh, that is in the ground and that belongs to this church, the Church of the Redeemer. We go on to uh, the history of the church, which is this large church was completed around the year 1035 Anno Domini, and the walls are covered with long and elegantly carved inscriptions that reveal much of its history. The inscription partially reproduces above records that the, that the church was commissioned by Prince Abgarib Palavid to house a fragment of the true cross. He had obtained this relic after a visit to Constantinople, and in the inscription he commanded that nightly services should be held within this church until the second coming of Christ. After the city was retaken by the Christians, the uh, church had two restorations, one in 1193 and another one in 1291. In 1342, they restored the cupola. So by, uh, by the 19th century, the church was still intact, but needed restoration. In 